So I'm like kind of scared to try the extra spicy, but I feel like we should. I mean, this is heat eaters. We're flushing. That's hot. It's hot? Yes. Is it getting hot? Is your, you guys have water? Let's go. This is really spicy. Oh my. On today's episode, we are exploring all things Mala Spice. Am I talking to this camera or? Yeah, to Bill's right here. To Bill. Hi. Come on, Bill, act natural. Hi, I'm Bill. Ready? This is my ultimate spice craving, and I'm really, really excited because we're in kind of the spice haven, Flushing Queens, and we're gonna visit Jason Wang of Xi'an Famous Food, and then later on, we're gonna meet with my good friend Bobby Flay, and I'm gonna introduce him to some Shangdu hot pot. Let's go. My gosh, I haven't been here in forever. This is my favorite side of Jason. He is so funny. Not spicy equals not as good. Preach, Jason. Let's head on in. <laughs> I see him over there. Jason! Hey! What's uh, up? Welcome. Oh my gosh. Can I give you a I haven't hug? Seen so long. Yeah, of course. Ow. <laughs> <laughs> nice to see you. My nice gosh. To see you. It's been forever. Come on in. Okay. Come on in. Awesome. You want to check it out? Our yes. little, little yes. setup here? Yeah. I could keep this open for you. So you can. Okay. Yeah. There you go. All set. What are you in the mood for? What do you want to eat? So, obviously I'm here for the spice. Yeah. Mala spice is something that I crave yeah. almost like on a weekly basis. It's, it's a so drug, right? Addictive. Technically. Yeah. For us, you know, I think the spicy and tingly beef yeah. will be a good choice for you today. Okay. We use this like uh, muscle cut, which is a mixture of lean meats, fatty meats, as well as tendons. Okay. Some people are a little put off by that, but I like it just because I that, love tendon. Yeah, it's the variation, right? Mm -hmm. That's what's interesting. You don't yeah. want to bite into something that's like just the same texture throughout, right? Yeah. But first, we got to make the noodles. I've always <laughs> wanted to make these noodles. What's in the dough? So the dough is just wheat flour, water, a little bit of salt. For each portion of noodles we're going to serve in our store, mm -hmm. we have, uh, we're going to use two of these pieces. Okay. So boom, boom. We're going to roll it a little bit, and then we're just going to indent it. Okay. Why? It's to drive the shape of the noodle as you pull it. Okay. Pull it, uh -huh. and, uh, sort of past the width of your uh, shoulder. Okay. And then you start swing up and down. Uh -huh. And you want to uh -huh. get to like four feet, five feet, somewhere in between. And at this point, you see this, that's yeah. the indentation, yeah. right? So we just rip, rip it apart, it drop this one right mm -hmm. into the water. Boiling water. And how long does it cook for? Three minutes at least. Okay. Oh my God. Yeah, biang biang noodles. Bam, bam, so, bam, 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 bam means that. That's the where it sound. comes from. Not bang, bang. It's <laughs> bam, bam. All right, yeah, there you go. We gotta get the culture right. So, same thing. We gotta get okay. these in soon just because we don't want it to, you know, cook for okay. different amounts of time. Pretty easy, right? Pretty easy. I yeah, wanna try. You got this. Go for try. it. Go okay. for it. So, if I learn correctly. Right. Yeah, there you okay. go. Yeah, that works. All right, all right, all right. And then we're gonna do this. Yep, perfect. So, you stretch so, first and then. You wanna pull it to just past your shoulder mm -hmm. and then start swinging it. Try to avoid like the arm movements. Uh, yeah. Just More wrist. so just the wrist. And wrist. let the weight of the noodles jump up and down, you know? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I messed perfect. up. But it was my first time. That's for such a critic of herself. Ah, uh, no worries. <laughs> you could drop it right in there. Right in here? Yep, yep, perfect. So if they don't you look know, that bad. They're, they're fine. They're, I mean, no, great. it looks pretty, pretty uneven. It, they look handmade. <laughs> they look handmade. Very good. So what we're doing right now is just we're gonna dress the noodles, the um, the vegetables first, mm -hmm. the the aromatics mix there, and then okay. some of that cabbage. cabbage, and then the vinegar and soy sauce mix, which we call noodle yes. sauce. Yes, noodle have some sauce. Of that. Hit me yeah. with the noodle <laughs> sauce. Hit you with the noodle sauce. Yo, I'm adding the chili oil. We also gotta have the actual spices and the chili on this. Right. We have our stew here. This has the Szechuan peppercorn in it, okay. among some of our chili oil as well. Mm -hmm. wow. After everything is in the pot, we're gonna just mix it together. Be I mean, like, it looks pretty spicy though. It's good, right? You need the balance between the vinegar, yes. the soy, the salty. Oh my God, it smells so good. Okay, pass the test. Yeah, pass the test, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the chili is one dimension of right. the spice, uh -huh. right? The uh, chili oil itself already has 30 different spices. Right. The beef also has more whole spices mm -hmm. while it's being cooked. Mm -hmm. Things like, you know, cardamom or star anise, and uh, among other stuff. Right. I read that Xi'an food takes influence from like Middle Eastern flavors as well. So like lots of cumin, yeah. cardamom like you mentioned. The food is sort of like this rip, rich uh, tapestry mm -hmm. of the history. It's sewn together 
Chinese, Middle Eastern, you know, like including Indian and then there's African, and even European influences, you know, it's time tested. It's right. it's like tried and true. Mm. It's really been around for so long that um, we, we really, you know, really trust in these flavors. Look at this, look at this. Look at these expertly pulled noodles. I wonder who made them. Mm. First thing you get is that chili, just like hits you in the face. But it's a combination of the spices that make this so special. You can taste the cumin, you can taste the cardamom, you can taste the chili peppers. There's something in the spice that's really smoky that I really love. And you really get that tingly, oh, I'm starting to get that tingly mouthfeel in the Szechuan peppercorn. Try some of the beef. Mm. I could do more spice. Famous last words. <laughs> I know. It's amazing though, like the tingliness in your mouth, it's so addictive. I can't stop eating it. Try it. You can put the camera down. <laughs> no, I got it. I always be filming, you know? <laughs> Best job in the world. All right. So uh, what's up? What I cannot stop eating this. Dude, you want extra spicy? I got you. So what do we have? Spicy tofu custard. Yo, this to me is the best thing ever. Bomb.com. The bomb. That's what all old people are saying now. Yeah. Uh, but yes. Yeah, that's kind of old. It is, right? <laughs> Gosh. What okay. is this? This is actually what made us famous in the first place. Mm -hmm. So this dish is straight out of Flushing. Uh, 18 wow. years ago, my father started first serving this dish in the US. This is liangpi. It means cold skin. And it's a great summer dish. Like today's a hot day, I'm sweating a little bit. Uh, this dish is perfect for that. Super chewy noodles. Yes. The spice hits you, definitely. Uh, a lot more so than the hot noodles, I yeah. think. It sort of pierces through yeah. your taste buds a little mm -hmm. bit more, right? Cold noodles is great for the summertime and, uh, you know, but it's, it's really <laughs> a test with it. Yeah, All right, chili. No, we get you one. The, the heat builds. You can't breathe in. It, yeah, so it's you hard. You gotta in? be careful which mm. which armor. You gotta like strategically time your breathing. I know. <laughs> People think like, oh, you can't handle the spice or something, mm, right? No, that's not it. I it's mean, not it, exactly, it's not it. One of the things that I feel like is so popular is in lamb skewers. Oh yeah, something I grew up with. As a kid, I actually, in Xi'an, I actually didn't like eating. I was a really skinny kid. Uh -huh. I really sought out, actually sought out eating, um, you know, lamb skewers. So yeah, we should definitely hit up a spot in Flushing. I do want to try it. I accidentally touched my nose yeah. after touching the chili pepper, so now my nose is like tingly and it hurts. Oh, literally. No. Like, hey, that's you want an extra spicy, man? Oh I know, god. right? Oh my god. Oh, that's okay. the car. Yeah, yeah, that's the car. Okay. Hi. All right, so here we are. Wow. Lamb for sure is always is the mainstay. Chicken skin? Chicken skin? Yeah. Okay, we'll try that. I don't usually get that, but I do like eating chicken skin. Yeah. So let's do that. Oh, that's chicken yang rou. Spicy, of course. Spicy. Uh, like an We like it spicy. What's that um, spice that he's putting on top of that? That is the chili powder. Probably similar to the ones we use. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Maybe not the exact same pepper, but the idea is the same. You want to, you know, the meat is still hot, it's still caramelized. You put the spices on, it roasts it right on the meat. It also sticks to it. The fat on the skewers Very actually kind of make a chili oil almost yeah, as exactly. you're turning the meat. Exactly. Yes. Very flavorful. You can smell the spices. Mm. This is the real real. Yes, the real real. And they're really small pieces of lamb. Is that something that's pretty traditional in these skewers? Or Dude, if you, if you think this is small, when I was growing up, mm -hmm. it's like mm. the sticks were like metal sticks mm -hmm. and they were like very thin, almost like wire-like. And the meat was maybe like a third of the width a of A third these. of this? And that's a really good thing though. Even uh -huh. though, yes, it's harder to like get filled up with right. it. But flavor -wise, the flavor, the much more surface area. This also the is flavor. so fucking good. Yeah. Tick, tick. Thank you. Oh, oh. oh. Mm. Damn, that is so good. Mm. And it's like not gamey. What do you think, Bill? Well, obviously oh, he loves it. <laughs> obviously he oh, loves good. it. Jason, thank you so much. No thank problem. you for coming over. Skewer hug. Skewer, skewer hug. hug.
Thank you so much, uh, Jason. You. You're Such the a best. Pleasure. Let's go get drinks soon. Let's get drinks. Let's get mm. skewered. Next time we can have karaoke and skewers. Yes, 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 it's yes, a yes. Deal. It's a hot day, hot day for some hot food. We're in Chinatown, so we have to get some boba. Thank you. I saw the sign that it says to stir it like 18 times. Very specific, 18 times. Mmm. Mmm. Oh my god, yum. This is gonna heal me for my next meal. Chefy! Stick it out like a You're sore late. thug. What's up? How you doing? I was, What's up? I was concerned my sneakers were gonna go out of fashion by the time oh. you got here. What? <laughs> You're the one that's always late. So when you want to find like really traditional, uh, delicious like Sichuan food, this is where you go. Okay. Flushing. Great. So this mall, it's called New World Mall. First floor, if you go that way, there's like a huge food court, which is really interesting. And then second, like casual. Very very casual, yeah. little food stalls, typical mall food court. Yeah. And then there's a shopping mall here, which you can get like the craziest groceries. You know, Chinese grocery stores are insane. It's like. It's like going to Italy, but Chinese instead. Yeah, like you can get frog. Frog? Get, yeah, frog. A live frog? Live frog. What do you do with that? I don't know, because that's one thing I haven't cooked with. Have you ever cooked with frog? There's no frog in Korean food? Not really. It's more like Chinese. Frog's legs I've cooked with. I mean, you it's have? French. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah? Do you like it? Yeah, I do. You know, it tastes, tastes like chicken. chicken. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it really does, though. So this is, this is the restaurant I'm taking you to. Oh, this is where we're going? Yeah, this oh, cool. is where we're going. It's called Xiang Hapan, also known as Spice World. I like that. This is really pretty. Yeah, it's gorgeous in here. And really fun. You smell the Sichuan peppercorn. Did you make a reservation? So, this is really fun. Have you had hot pot before? Not in a restaurant. I feel like hot pot is the experiential dining. Okay. Like it's it's like the induction in the middle. You get a huge pot of boiling broth and then all the vegetables and meats come raw and then you cook it yourself. This one is special because Sichuan, it has this like specific type of spice to it called mala. Sichuan pe peppercorns, right? Uh-huh, Sichuan peppercorns and chili. Uh -huh. and, and there's like different colors of Sichuan peppercorns, right? Yes, like different the red, colors. There's red, red there's green, green yeah. there's black. Right. And Sichuan peppercorns are uh, special because it gives you that numbing. Yeah. Ma is like the numbing and la is the spicy. So this menu is kind of crazy. It's like one of those menus where you check off what you want. Yeah, so I'm gonna let you do this because really? I have no idea what. Well, I, I have no idea what I'm doing. 10 different types of broths we can get. All right. I think it's a good idea to always get one super spicy and one very mild so that, you know, you have something to balance it. I want to taste the flavors of the chilies. I want to taste the flavors of, of whatever the chilies are sort of enhancing, etc. And a lot of people just think of chilies as being hot. Uh -huh. The bottom line is every chili or most chilies have incredible flavor, but you have to get past the heat to get to the fruitiness or the earthiness or the smokiness or whatever it is. I cook with chilies for accent, not injury. Right. That said, I'm in your car. I'll do whatever you want to do. <gasps> okay. I mean, this is heat eaters. We're in Flushing. Um, so we'll do one extra spicy. And then I'm thinking we either do chicken broth or pork bone broth. Chicken What's about? Is better? Yeah. Okay, so we'll do that. Wait, there's a pina colada on here. Hi. Hello. There's a bear in it. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that's beautiful. Wow. The bear is made with beef tallow. And this is the broth. So this is the chicken broth, and then he's about to pour the broth in here, and then it melts the bear. The bear is in quicksand. <laughs> he's out of here. He's so cute. All right, Bill, take a look at the bear. Mr. Bear. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Bear. <laughs> is this a pina colada? This is the okay, great thing. You can go, it's like going to the beach and having hot pot at the same time. Should I try the spicy one? You wanna try it? Okay. What do you think, spicy? It's not that spicy. It's not that spicy? No. Is it? Not yet. We have to let the chilies really go to work. Right. For this style hot pot, the more you eat, the spicier it gets. And in like 30 minutes, you're going to be like dying. Clams? Oh, they have to open up. Mm-hmm. 
So the great thing about hot pot, I feel like after you put in a lot of these ingredients, it just gets better and better. Yeah. Because the broth gets flavored by all the different things that you put inside. It's starting to get hot. Is it? Yeah. It's okay. getting hot. Yeah? Are you okay? <laughs> I'm getting like really hot. Do I have to I finish the show for you? <laughs> I have to take off my jacket. That's when you know it's getting good. Here's where I'm just gonna get my hands dirty. I'm just gonna add everything into the broth here. <laughs> Cause I feel like the veggies hold a lot of that broth. So the veggies are very, very What do you have, Napa cabbage? Napa cabbage, which is my favorite in hot pot. So I'm just gonna start adding. And I always like ripping it with my hands because it's like smaller pieces, easier to eat. This is a chrysanthemum, we'll add. This is my favorite in here as well. Yeah, no, you love that. Yeah, I love this. So I just go crazy. And then mushrooms. Woo! Yeah? Yeah, I feel it on my lips, right here. <laughs> you guys have water. <laughs> I'm gonna need some milk soon. Oh, oh my god. Um, it's spicy. It's, it just ramps up. It just knocks on the door and says, Woo! we're a little spicy, and then all of a sudden, they knock the door You're down. You're sweating. They knock, the, oh, <laughs> they knock the door down, it's crazy. I'm sorry, I gotta pull my nose. We'll be right back after this commercial. <laughs> oh, this is the Wagyu. That looks gorgeous. This is so fun, Esther. Let me just tell you something. Okay, Because I, I want to tell you about my, uh, my emotions right now. Your emotions. <laughs> because it's hot. But you know what's happened? And this is what happens with chilies. Before you jump into a pool that's cold, mm -hmm. you don't want to jump in. But once you get used to it, then you're fine. My body's actually starting to adjust to, to the, the spice. heat. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I want to show you one of the very trendy hot pot tricks, which I don't think works. But okay, so you take your meat, then you twirl it, and then you cook it. I just did that. Look. How was that? That's one you ever saw? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna try it too. Because I feel like this doesn't work because then it cooks the meat unevenly. Oh my God. <laughs> I know that you are a mentor to a lot of cooks and chefs, like me. How do you pick out talent? That's a really great, nobody's yeah. ever asked me that. I don't look for skills when it comes to people that I want to mentor. Really? No, it's not about the skills. It's about the attitude and the work ethic. I'm interested in people that really want to learn how to cook and take their skills to wherever they want to take it. Now, years ago, it was like, do you want to be on TV or do you want to cook in a restaurant? Those days are over. Now it's all sort of kind of blended uh -huh. together and that's mm -hmm. a good thing, which just means there's, there's, there's a lot of amazing opportunities for people who want to cook professionally in this world. The most important thing, and this is something I tell everybody, just keep focused on what you're doing in terms of your restaurants and your cooking. Because at some point, if you just think, oh, if I get a TV show, I'm good, mm -hmm. that's the beginning of the end. You can always fall back on your, on your career, right. which is you can always open your knife and start cooking anywhere in the world. And that's, that's something that somebody can't take away from you. So do you think that this, they're a good cook here? Yeah. I actually, I, the, yeah. the chicken broth is crazy flavorful. It's so crazy, right? But this is like, this literally changes every 45 seconds. It's so cool. It's crazy hot yeah. right now. And it goes really well with a pina colada. <laughs> you drank it all. You were sweating. You were sweating. It's good. Thank yeah. you for introducing me to this. this oh amazing. my gosh, of course. I was like, I want to bring Bobby to Hot Pop because I know that this is a style of eating you don't see often. Exactly. And you do have to kind of trek all the way to Flushing. Chef, thank you so much. Oh, it's my pleasure. Let's so do it good. again. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm not done. I'm You're gonna, not done? I'm gonna yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna keep eating. Thank you. Uh, you wanna put it in the soup plate or? I think we can put it in. Oh, look at the front. What's that? Yeah, What's that? Like a sham meatball. Make a meatball sham. Is it a show for you? I like your budget on this show. <laughs> oh, this is the Wagyu. Oh my god. Dungeness crab. That's awesome. Hey guys, it's Esther from Heat Eaters. Thanks for watching. <coughs> oh god, that was spicy. <coughs> 
please like and subscribe. And to watch more episodes, click here.